it's easy to find tutorials about tile maps and also about 2D characters. But then you sit there with your map and your player and this is where the tricky part starts. Why is my collision not working? Why is my player in front of the map? Why is my player behind the map? Can I please throw this away? But it's all fine. Let's just try to calm down and solve this like a pro. Following all my tutorials, you now have two tile maps. One for the background and one on top with activated collisions. In my case, this looks like this. I don't want the player to walk into the water, so I simply put it onto the other tile map. Of course, feel free to create as many separate maps as you want. We then added this 2D character of this half naked dude, made him walk and animated this. This looks good until I let him randomly walk through my map and he suddenly is Jesus. In my tile maps basics video, I explained how to use colliders with tile maps, but never how this applies to the player and how they interact with one another. So let's start with this topic and then we will take a look into layering all our objects in the next episode. As this video is player oriented, not tile map oriented, I recommend you to take a look at my tile maps video. But based on its current view count, it's most likely you already saw this. And this is good, so thank you for this. Otherwise, please take a look at the collider part. You should then end up with at least one tile map that has some colliders on it. A tile map collider 2D, which is used by a composite collider 2D. You can see the collider lines here in the scene window, marked by this light green line. For every collision, both colliding objects need a collider. Currently, our player doesn't have one. So it's obvious why he can't just walk through my map. So let's add one. You can use any 2D collider you want, but in this case a box collider 2D fits the best. For jump and run games, you might want to take a look into edge colliders, but this is not relevant here. Let me just get rid of this input icon here, so now we can see the collision lines and adjust it to our needs. And with a polygon collider you can even create more customized shapes. My collider will only be located at the feet of the player. When starting the game your collision should work. Due to the collision being only at the feet, you also get the feeling of the player being much more involved in the world and it looks like he really stands in front of this bin. But one important thing to keep in mind, collisions are a physics thing in Unity. So one of the two colliding objects need a rigid body attached to it. In our case, the tile map as well as the player have one. So this works out of the box. Physics are also a funny thing in Unity. Of course, we don't want the player to spin like this. Exactly, he must not spin or rotate in any way. Leave play mode and in the rigid body settings, open this constraints tab. Here you can restrict any axis for movement and rotation. We want to move on the x and y axis, so that's fine. But let's constrain any force applied to the rotation axis. When now walking around collision corners, nothing happens. When walking diagonally against the collision edge, you can see the player moves slower. This is because there is a little friction between both colliders. If you don't want this, you need to create your own physics material for the rigid body. Let's create a new folder called physics. In here, right click, create, 2D, physics material 2D. Since this will make our player slippery, I call it this way. Now just turn the friction down to zero or whatever you prefer. Now just drag and drop this in the material slot of your player's rigid body. Or apply it to your tile map's rigid body if you have for example only one collision map but different characters. Would just be more easy but doesn't really matter. When the player now rubs against the collision edges it's much faster. Still not as fast as pure vertical movement but this is related to how the movement is normalized and not that much noticeable. So I think it's fine. If you think different, please feel free to leave an angry comment. Due to how this tile set is made, my water also has this part of green on it. And of course having this as collision is completely stupid. 
So let me show you a way how to change those collision borders. Go to your sprites folder and locate your sprite sheet of your collidables and open it in the sprite editor. Here we can adjust the so-called physics shape for every tile individually. At the top left switch to custom physics shape. Locate the tile you want to change and select it with a left click. Now just drag and hold to create a rectangle. This is the new collision shape. Pick the corners and adjust it the way you want. Or click generate to get a currently used shape. You can also add new corners or remove them with the delete key. This is absolutely tedious and I won't do this for all of these. But when you are done, hit apply. This now changed how the colliders for this specific tile will look like. Now this only changes new usages of this tile. To also apply this to already drawn tiles, all you need to do is to uncheck this checkbox and you should see the new collision line. Now the colliders for all the tiles have been updated to use the new shape. You can even check this box again to make it a composite collider again. You just need to tell the collider to recalculate and this is the easiest way. This is of course just the most basic knowledge on how to start with colliders. If you have any more questions let me know in the comments and I'll try my best to answer these. I don't know exactly, but I think this could be a flower. But I don't want my player to stumble over a flower like... Bye. Removing the collision via the physics shape does not work. This will just fall back to the default collider. What you need to do instead is going to the tile itself. It's located in the tiles folder. Or whatever you named it. Though tiles is the only folder name that makes sense. Locate your tiles and then just set its collider type to none. And then, even if this tile is used on a map with a collider, no collider will be applied for it. It will automatically update and now the player can walk over it. Now let's take a closer look at this. Well, previously I thought this was a bench. Comparing it with the other things on the spreadsheet, I guess it is not. But who cares? In the custom physics shape editor, you already learned about the generate button. The shape you see generated is the default physics shape applied to this tile. This gets more obvious for something like this tile. This is how the collider looks now. I do not save, but in the scene you can see this exact shape. Unity generates collision based on the sprite of the tile, not the rectangle tile itself. This is done because the collider type we saw earlier is set to sprite. Now let's make this bench a little more benchy. Like the player, the collision only occurs where there is something on the ground. The player's feet, the bench's feet. So I think it makes this look much more realistic. Well, besides the player walking on it, that's obviously not realistic. Which leads us to our second problem to tackle. The player should be in front of the bench when standing here, but should not be on top of it when standing here, but rather be partly covered. And do you want to know the cool thing? Unity lets us do this without the need of any additional code. How to automatically sort sprites will be shown in the next episode. Thank you for watching and also thank you to everyone supporting me and the channel. Special thanks to my supporters on Patreon, Patrick, Nexwomo, Bashan Librarian, Ellie and Introvert Genius. Thank you all. And as usual, if you enjoy the content, consider liking and subscribing. And I'll see you next time.